Hello, cellists. Beethoven's Opus 102 uh, cello sonatas are the most complex out of his five uh, sonatas. And today I wanted to talk about the C major, um, the Opus 102, number one, which is short but packs an enormous amount of detail and beauty. When we look at the opening indication of teneramente, which means tenderly, and um, then we look uh, under, it says dolce cantabile. So there are not one, not two, but three, three words that come to describe uh, basically the same thing. Uh, and that, that gives us a huge clue uh, to uh, what Beethoven was after here. I take care to vibrate on each note in the opening phrase. There's a curve to the line of the first phrase. Four notes are uh, going down, not only in pitch, but also in intensity. So... I like showing this uh, by slowing down my vibrato ever so slightly. So. The second part of this opening phrase has a forward movement. Be sure you give enough time and uh, expression to that slide from the C to the G. Similarly, be sure not to throw away, uh, and I mean, uh, by throwing away, I mean uh, not taking advantage of a, uh, a means to expression. So, uh, from the G to the D, um, it's a very expressive uh, um, slide or interval. Um, and then again in bar uh, five, from the B to the A. Here. That's um, a slide many of us decide not to take. Uh, that's also obviously possible. I like staying on the G string. I think it's, um, it's, it keeps the color uh, more cohesive. So. But be sure, if you are taking this slide, to be extremely uh, subtle about it. So you know, take off the weight of the bow and the left hand and only come down when you get to the A. Uh, otherwise, it can sound really cheesy. <laughs> um, I use a shift from above for the first uh, of those two uh, intervals, the bigger intervals. So um, that means that I'm using a guiding finger, the first finger going from C to E. But we don't hear the E. Um, this is just for practice purposes. But the slow motion would be... Uh, again in the uh, bar four. One, start on G. To B on one. And then three, lands on the D. But we don't want to hear it again, so... Uh, the last shift I, I um, use um, below. I don't do a German, what I call a German shift, but I, the shift is below for me. So I shift on the third finger. Going on to bar seven, each D should speak. I vibrate on each D and uh, enunciate with a bow, um, separate with a bow slightly. Um, in bar eight, the left hand uh, should crescendo into the B from the B to the second B, so... This is a very, again, a very subtle movement, um, and I hope it can translate well into the video, but... Um, those two Bs are not exactly the same. Um, one leads to another, and, uh, and you do it 
with both hands, with the left and the right. So it's not a... It's a, uh, the crescendo, in other words, uh, is also in the left hand. Um, let's see. Separate and vibrate and give time to each F in bar 10. So um, here I'm... Much like bar 7, I separate uh, each note, each F in bar 10. <laughs> Um, and that gives it that speaking quality. Um, in bar 20, take a little time from the E and add it to the shift. Let's see, bar 20. <laughs> Going on in bar 23, um, I like to vibrate on each note. Um, this keeps my hand loose and um, makes uh, for better expression. Mm. I also give a little extra time on the last C of that bar. This one. The vibrato slows down in bar 26. Um, so here. You see how the G, the vibrato on my first finger on the G. Uh, controlling the speed of vibrato is one of the hardest things we can uh, work on. Um, it takes a long time to really control the left hand, especially when we are nervous, we tend to uh, vibrate quicker, uh, quickly. And um, so, you know, try to think about it uh, when you practice at home. The Allegro Vivace. Be sure you don't choke your notes, uh, the long notes here. I lift the bow between each note, so. Uh, I play double A here, uh, both on the D and the open string. Just gives it more power and richer sound. Be sure the 16th note receives its full value here. Um, and also use enough bow for that 16th note so it does not uh, get lost. Sometimes we even have to cheat and slightly elongate the short notes so that they do not sound muffled or disappear altogether. In bar 31, the glissando prepares us for the piano on the F. Okay. So... This is a bit of a romantic approach uh, to Beethoven, but I think it adds uh, richness to this piece. Um, be careful with this glissando um, and use your judgment in terms of how much is too much. Let's look at the dolce at bar 40. You can add an almost imperceptible shift here. shift I actually aim um, in this case almost to the B flat so slightly before the note um, it's not this and it's not nothing it's not just CA um, there is a connection but it's a very short uh, glissando so that there's air and then you can hear again the glissando just before you hit the A. And for that you really have to control your bow uh, mostly, I think. Uh, how to lift and how much to lift and when to uh, put your weight back on. So. And then uh, bar 42 uh, has a different color than the 
the piano. I mean, we're still in piano, but the register is lower, and so the color is, uh, and the key is different, so. <laughs> the triplets uh, on the string with little bow to start and then add the bow with a crescendo here. Um, Etc. So as you see I start with very little uh, bow and I add uh, once I get to I have more bow. Um, in uh, bar 70, we have dots above the notes, um, but I don't think this is um, a light passage. Uh, we're in risoluto, um, and I like uh, to treat those dots as just separators for those quarters. So, so. This is the sound I look for, and not. Uh, this is not um, the character, in my opinion. In the middle of bar 80, uh, it takes time to change the character. Um, here. Uh, <laughs> is mysterioso, the way I, I hear it, and um, I play it at the tip, uh, and the transformation from Resoluto to Misterioso happens on that F sharp. <laughs> um, the difference between forte and piano, especially for Beethoven, uh, should be very clear and uh, exaggerate if you're not sure how much is enough. In the second half of bar 88, I like to vibrate just before I hit that B, B flat to prepare for the forte piano. Um, you may disagree, you might want to have a completely quiet and then uh, a bit of a more, more of a surprise, but um, uh, my vibrato grows just a, a hair before uh, I hit that B flat. So. The this long B flat um, should have um, something happening to it. Uh, just don't keep it same for um, those long four four and a half bars. Uh, I like to start with very little vibrato and grow it. A little bit. So obviously you would grow the vibrato more on the A because that's where the crescendo starts. But um, I do like to liven the B flat even as I am uh, playing in pianissimo. Um, to create movement, I think uh, an interest you should be obviously be very subtle with it because we are within pianissimo. In bar 102, uh, there is intensity in the left hand, even when we diminuendo keep the tension. Um, <laughs> so this E is not a uh, relaxed E. <laughs> um, just a note about vibrato and dynamics. Uh, when we have piano, sometimes it is very effective to keep the vibrato um, quite, qu quite quick and intense. Uh, uh, be sure you don't always slow down when you see a piano marking. Um, this depends on the, obviously on the character of the piece or of the phrase. Um, in bar 105, we have a question mark. Um, be sure you take time on that um, eighth rest in bar 106. Uh, 
the sound opens up a bit in bar 111 on that uh, octave interval. So we have first we have C C and then notice how the colors of those two um, registers is is different. I'm more open on the A's. In uh, bar 113, uh, the start of the quarters uh, is clear. Sometimes we have to give a little definition to each uh, quarter to, to give this um, uh, energetic impetus. In bar 134, um, be sure you, your vibrato is continuous. This is something to practice also, um, and it really helps to relax the left hand. Um, In 145 and 146, um, we have a left hand um, enunciation. Um, this is here. Sometimes um, I compare this to a, a, an actor, a theatrical actor on stage uh, having a whisper. Obviously, uh, he has to really speak very clearly if he's speaking quietly, so that the last row in the theater, uh, the people in the last row will be able to hear him. Similarly here, if you don't enunciate a little bit uh, with your left hand, these can go um, and we don't want those notes to be muffled. Um, by enunciating, I mean, um, coming down a little stronger with your fingers than you would uh, do for a very uh, legato passage. So you almost hear the, the tap of your fingers on the fingerboard. Um, and going down sometimes it means plucking the string almost. Almost. <laughs> Let's look at one, two, three, four bars before the end of this beautiful movement. Um, so I will start five before. Notice how I lift the F. Uh, so be sure to let the, your cello vibrate. Uh. movement here uh, for me so here but the last three notes I like them more um, vertical um, this is it for today my friends thank you for watching and we'll see you next time